Hey everyone, welcome to my Common UI tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the basics of what Common UI is and how we can set it up. Uh, with that, I'm actually gonna be going into setting up the settings in the beginning. Uh, so I'm gonna try to go in through as much as I can along the settings on what the inputs are, how to set them up properly, and then to give you a basic understanding of what everything is. And then that way, in the future, you'd be able to set this up easily. Um, I'll also just give a little tips along the way. Uh, but after that, we're then going to go into some common, <laughs> common, common UI widgets. So widgets that are quite popular that are used very often. One of them being the common act activatable widget. Uh, it's used for a lot of things. You don't have to know right now what exactly it is, or maybe you understood the reference, uh, but still want to look at more features that you could do. So we're going to be going into that. And um, I'm not going to go over every single widget type. I am going to just try to give you a basic understanding of some stuff. I know I said that a few times, but I will do separate videos going into very uh, specific use cases you could use Common UI for, for example, like a tab list. Um, you could do like rotating images that automatically change and you don't actually have to do anything. Uh, kind of think like, um, you know, when you start a game and then you see um, like patch notes and they'll flip to another page and then on that page, it'll tell you um, like new skins released. Uh, you'd be able to do something like that. Um, not gonna go over in that video, but or in this video, but I will go into some future videos. So hopefully you learn a lot out of this and then we can move into creating some more advanced stuff. So yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, so the very first thing that you'll need to do is you'll have to go into plugins, search for common UI. Now you will have to tick this on. It's naturally off as much as I wish it would turn on automatically when I open up projects. Uh, make sure to turn it on and then it will require you to restart. Uh, so go ahead and do that first, pause the video and come back. But nonetheless, let's continue. So since I have that turned on already, what we need to do is there's a few things that we need to set up beforehand. So as I said before, we're gonna set up some um, input actions. We wanna also make sure that we have images that match up with the inputs that we're selecting. So before that, I have imported some free assets. Now these are some free assets that are free to anybody you can download and they are, as you can see, all the assets are public domain licensed and you can use it for any type of personal or commercial project. So I hit that download and I took all of these. I am using the PlayStation 5 because I have a PlayStation 4 controller. It's close enough but I'm using images that will reflect close to the gamepad I'm using. But there are a lot of other assets available such as Xbox, Switch, or whatever gamepad that you are using. So moving on from there, we now want to go into the settings. There's a few things we're gonna need to set up, but I also wanna go over them with you before we start setting them up. So let's go into project settings. And then from here, if you go into the common input settings, it's under games select here. This is typically where you'll start seeing your plugins that you've added. So from the start, it should be looking like this. And input data, to give you a good example, this is what we set up when we want to input um, the gamepad's default um, select and back button. So a lot of widgets that we have that we'll be using in creating will have a default confirm or select button, whatever you want to call it. Um, for my PlayStation controller, it's the X, which is the face button, the face down button. And the back button, which is typically the face right button. Sorry, I didn't think about the name. Uh, but anyways, so that is where you set up the default select and back buttons that we'll be using for all of our UIs. And then from there, we have the platform inputs. Now, this is where you can create different types of controller data for every type of input that you have. So for example, if you're building a Mac, you'd be able to add in controller data or controller data, whatever you wanna to refer to as, depending on how you pronounce that word. <laughs> so 
From there, you'd be able to select here, and if you had any options available, you'd be select. You'd be able to select them. Now, I haven't created them yet. Uh, we'll get into it. But this is where you could set up for all the different type of platforms that you have available. However, I'm going to be using Windows only because that is what I use. I use Windows. Uh, if you use Linux, iOS, or, well, if you are going to set up iOS, I should say, you'd be able to do this. So if you want to support multiple different consoles, you'd be able to go through and select as such. And those are going to be the main important ones. Um, for Windows, if we go to the default, the things that we have available, it allows you to decide on what we will support. Obviously, I'm not supporting touch because that is not something I'm going to have. I will support gamepad, and then I'm also going to support mouse and keyboard. Now, you can also toggle one or the other off, and then they will be available for your game. So if you're doing gamepads only, you can go ahead and turn off mouse keyboard. But for this, you'd be able to hit that drop down, and you can also select mouse keyboard, gamepad, touch, and count. The default gamepad name, this is going to reference the controller data that we create. You may not know yet, but there will be able to <clears throat> identify which controller data we want to use based upon what this name is. So what we'll need to do is create some controller data. And then we also need to create input data. So let's go over here into our content drawer. Let's create a brand new folder, call it common UI. From here, we're going to go into input and open that up. So three different things that we're going to need to create here is we're going to need to create an input data. We also need to create the two controller data that we need. Now, in order to do all three of those, we first need to create what is called a common UI input action data table. This is where we'll set up the actions that you can make for your UI. So this is what we're going to start with first. Going into here, I'm actually just going to call this input action data table. Now you can create multiple amounts of these depending on your UIs if you want to create different type of actions for different types of UIs. So it doesn't have to just be this one. Uh, if you had one UI that's very like um, inventory focused, so you can have like a hotkey that will um, filter your inventories or you can have a hotkey that will change the tabs of the inventory or a hotkey that will delete or whatever it is or merge separate whatever you're doing you can have different type of action data tables you don't have to have one uh, so that's just something um, to clarify but let's open this up for our use case we're only going to create four it's going to be just the very very standard buttons we're going to have a confirm button we're going to have a back button and then we're just going to have a, a left and right tab button so stuff that lets us filter through tabs. All right, so we're going to hit add. It always takes a while for the first one. Give it a second. There we go. And then after that, the other three are pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to select. Name it whatever you want. This is going to be either your select, your confirm, um, your down button, whatever you want to call it as. And then this one we're going to name back, back, or you can even call it like previous, whatever you want. We're going to call this tab left, tab left, and then tab right. Go in here and delete. All right, there we go. So we named them and now we need to set the keys. So to kind of speed up this along, I'm going to need to pull up my content browser. I'm going to pull this, oh, pull it out so I can have it over here. And I want these images open up just like this. 
So it'll be a little easier when I go through. Because I'm going to set all the keys and I'm going to match them to their respected keys. So for our select button, I'm going to do enter. And then we're going to go into the brush. We're going to type in enter. And then I'm going to pull that in there. So we have a brush image. And then we also have um, the key. And then from here, we can also do the default key input. So we'd be able to do the same thing where we can decide on what type of key. And actually, I just realized I didn't have it plugged in. So I'm going to need to plug this in real quick. All right. And now that that's plugged in, I'll be able to set what type of key that I want. So my select button is going to be the face down button. Oh, why is it not going? Hold on. Select key. There we go. It was being a little weird. So let me go through and I'm going to enter in all of these information listed and then I'll go back into um, explaining what everything is. Uh, so let me set all these keys. We're going to open this up left, uh, right, tab left. We'll say for the keyboard, we'll just do like left arrow. And then tab right, we'll do like right arrow. And then back button, just like backspace. Okay. And then let me get backspace. Left. Oh, it's gonna be a little confusing with backspace and left. It's fine. Right. And then let's close the keyboard inputs. And now let's get the game pads. Oh, back button I forgot to set. Okay. We got that. We got that. The left shoulder and right shoulder. Okay. I'm going to move that off of the side because we don't need it right now. Let's just save that real quick. All right. So to kind of explain what's going on here, this is what all of our UIs are going to read. We're going to have these four inputs. So they're all going to be able to recognize these four type of inputs that we have set up. Now, this is one of the way or one of the things we need to set up so that our UIs can reference them. There's still a few other things that we need to do, but this is one of the steps. And from here, we set the name and the hold display. So when the button is a hold action, uh, this is the name that would it would reference, which is just select. So I put select for all. Uh, you could also do like hold select or whatever as like uh, you're holding down the button to confirm. Uh, you know how in some games where um let's say if you want to delete something you had to hold down the uh delete button that's what it would be for oh i disconnected my controller on accident all right so from here we then decided what key will reference our select button i put enter uh, for a keyboard it could also just be like mouse click i just did enter it's fine uh, we're not really going to be using a keyboard for these buttons anyways, but we'll have it nonetheless. And then that is where we set the image that would reflect what button we press. So enter, enter. And then we did the exact same thing for the default keypad. Now this is going to be the standard gamepad, which is going to default for anything. Now it's not going to tell you the difference between whether this is an Xbox, a Switch, a PlayStation, or um, I, I think Steam has one, uh, or just like any generic one. But you have that button, there is a drop down list to where you can actually select on all of them. Uh, so you'd be able to select the respected one. And that would be the button for it. The uh, oh, auto save. And then we had the image reflect. The other thing is you'd be able to have other gamepad input overrides. So this is if you had more than one um, type of gamepad. 
So for example, we only have generic, but let's say there was more than generic. You had um, Xbox Switch, all of that other stuff. You'd be able to set the respected gamepad inputs as such. So you didn't have, you wouldn't have to do just the default one. For me, I'm just doing the default, that's okay. But just to let you know that those exist and that's why we set up all of these. With that, let's go ahead and close this out. We shouldn't need to go into that. And let's go back into our content drawer. From here, we now want to set up our input data. So we're gonna type input data, generic input data here and hit select. We're gonna just do input data. We're gonna keep it generic, name it whatever you want and open this up. Uh, I'm gonna close it and reopen just because I hate seeing the um, event graph. But from here, it defaults to the generic uh, references. So if you actually hit this, it would take you to the generic and you can actually open up. And they have just the generic buttons that are referenced. Uh, none of them have images, but they do have the buttons and what they reference. Uh, you could technically copy this and paste it and then turn it into whatever you want if you want to use every single button that exists. Uh, I'm not doing that for my UIs because not every button is going to be useful. And instead, we created our own, as you can see here, where we have our own. And then we'll do that. And then we'll have the row name. And this is where we have the options we created. Uh, so this is where we have our select button. So our default click action is going to be select. So you can also rename that to like click, whatever you want. And then we'll also have our default back option, which is going to be the back action. And then you can have hold data if you want any. So from there, go back to project settings, go into input. And this is where we'll be able to put in our input data. So input data, input data. I did that on purpose just because it's very simple and one-to-one -one match. And that's all we need to do for the click or the select and the back button. Now we need to do the controller data that I mentioned before for Windows. So let's go ahead, get out of here, go back into input. And from here, we're gonna go into controller data and you'll see common input based controller data. We'll call this controller data PC because that is what we're, um, it goes controller data and then whatever system you're using. So um, Windows, which we're gonna put PC or if it was Mac, you could put MAC, um, Linux, whatever you want. But so we're gonna do PC and we're gonna do keyboard. We're gonna control D to make a copy and we're gonna rename this to gamepad. So we have keyboard and gamepad. Let's open both up. Let's try that again. I hate seeing the event graph for no reason. <laughs> and from here, this is where we're gonna set up our keys once again. So just like we did with our input action where we set up all of these we're gonna do the exact same thing let me put this content drawer in here so that i can have this available here we need to set up all four keys once more so for our mouse keyboard mouse keyboard works perfectly fine you don't need to set anything else because it's mouse keyboard we'll go into here one two three four and we're gonna set up all the controller data. So the keys that our UIs will actually take. You could technically set up every single key if you really wanted to, uh, but in UIs, you're probably not gonna set up every single key and not every key is gonna have a purpose, but you can set up as much as you want. So let me go into keyboard. We're gonna to go to dark and then I'm gonna do, I think it was enter backspace left, right enter that's not that's not enter oh let me open that up and we'll have back left 
and then we'll have right. All right. So we set up very quickly, enter backspace left, right. Super simple, that's all you need to do. You don't have to do brush key sets, just do brush data maps. Uh, that's where we're gonna set everything up. Saving just to make sure. And now we're gonna do our gamepad. So for me, it's gonna be over here. Just like before, one, two, three, four. We're gonna have our select button, our back button, our left tab, and our right tab. Let me open up all these key brushes. We're gonna go into our select button. We're gonna have our back button, our left shoulder, and then our right shoulder. Bam. And for our gamepad, we're now going to need to change this to gamepad to reflect gamepad. And then gamepad name, we're gonna to switch to generic because that's what we have available. We have generic. From here, we're gonna just change this display name to generic because that's all we're gonna use. And platform name is gonna be Windows because we're gonna make sure that we reflect the platform we are using, which is gonna be Windows, which is the platform it's referring to. If it is a different platform, make sure to reference the platform that it is. And from there, that's all I need to do. Go ahead and save that again. I'm gonna call, close this content browser because I don't think we need it. And then over in our settings, we're gonna add the two that we have. So we're gonna go into keyboard and we're gonna go into gamepad. And now we've linked both the controller data here. And now we'll be able to have our inputs for our UI. So super important. With that, we set up our inputs and now we can actually start creating our UIs. And one last settings that I forgot to mention under project settings, go into search bar, type in viewport and make sure to change this to common game viewport. This is what's gonna allow us to select the highest widget on our hierarchy so that the UI always knows which widget to grab for the inputs. Very important to switch that over. So just a um, quick overview of the settings that are important. The moment you start up the project, you need to change the viewport, ah, viewport client class to the common game viewport client. So make sure to switch that over. And then under common input settings, make sure to add an input data, and then also make sure to add controller data very important to set up. And then once you actually change the viewport to the common UI, it will tell you to restart. So just go ahead and restart. Now let's get into going over some of the widgets. So what we'll want to do is the very first thing is to make our main menu level. So like you've probably seen in other tutorials, if you've seen anything along the lines of UIs, is you end up seeing them create a blank world. So with that, there's actually a purpose for it is because a lot of the times a main menu is gonna have a lot of functionalities and, input and inputs uh, that you aren't gonna want in your actual in-game. So most of the time, 100% uh, of a main menu's functionality is not gonna need to be within the actual game. And the actual game itself will have maybe some type of UI that it is either similar or close to the same as the main menu, but it has some variations uh, just because they're in the game. And usually it's like a pause menu and that pause menu has functionality to it, but it's not exactly the main menu. Now that could be close, but it doesn't always mean it's the same. So that is why you end up seeing a blank level. And then what we do is we just create a brand new level. We call this main menu. And then from here, if we were to open it up, it should be completely blank, which is perfect. And then from here, we want to now make a game mode and a player controller. So we want something specific for the main menu so that when we create the UI, we can do what we need to do with it. And it doesn't actually conflict with anything from your um, 
in in game playing uh whatever your world is so from here let's go into third person blueprints and then oh looks like i forgot to delete some stuff but anyways we're going to go into here hit blueprint blueprint we're going to make a new player controller we're going to call this pc player and open this up go into the event graph what we want to do is from the player this is how we're going to create our ui and that's just for our main menu it's just nice and simple we don't have to have too many complicated blueprints for it so from here we're going to create a widget and from there we don't have a class yet to select from we just have as you can see default stuff that appear you can also notice how you have default ui ones common uis but anyways this is just to show you a structure with every widget that we create, we need to add to viewport. So from the get-go, we're gonna need the viewport to be available. And we also want to set game or set UI mode only. We're gonna do self and just put widget in focus. And then flush input. So from the very start, we are going to create a random widget. We haven't made one yet, so obviously this won't work. You want to add to viewport because this is what's going to allow the player to see the widget. If you don't do that, you won't see it. Uh, so just important for that. And then we set to UI mode only so that we can actually interact with the UI. Other thing is we can actually, because we have our own player, if we go to the settings, we should be able to turn on the show mouse cursor on its own. You can also select your own type of default mouse cursor if you wanted to. Um, if we hit compile, it doesn't work. So just go ahead and disconnect that right now. But I just wanted to go over that. Next, we're gonna create our own game mode. So blueprint class game mode. We're gonna do GM underscore. So GM for game mode and just type main menu. And when we open this up, of course it shows the event graph. I wanna get rid of that. Go under player controller class and change PC controller. That just allows us to do that. And then for default pawn class, go to none. We don't need a pawn for our main menu. We don't need anything here. So go ahead and do that. Closing this, and then we'll leave that up because we're gonna have to come back to this soon. And then from the world settings, under game mode override, select your GM main menu. And that will allow us to create our widgets when we need to. So let's go back to our common UI and let's go into widgets. So from the start, we are going, oh, let me actually disconnect the controller for now because that pop-up is kind of annoying. All right. So if we were to right click here, you'll notice under user interface, you can go to widget blueprint. From here, if you were to expand this all classes, you can actually see that we start seeing these common widgets that are appearing. So these are other type of common widgets that we have available. So rather than the standard user widget, we have the common user widget. So for us, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a uh, common user widget. So we're going to hit select and we're just going to do uh, widget blueprint and we're just going to do common user widget. We're going to open this up. So from here, let's go ahead and create. Oh. And we're just going to call this user widget and open that up. So one thing you'll notice from the get go is that when we have our common user widget open, we have this thing called input on the side. So it would be here. And then when we go to user widget, we'll notice that that is not available. We have input right below where it just shows priority or stop action. 
So there is some extra functionality that Common UI provides, which those actions that we have created are what allow us to have these other types of options. And it just works a lot more with Common UI. Now, one thing is there may not be huge differences between what we have in Common User Widget compared to User Widget. Um, but there is quite a difference once we go into what a common activatable widget is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this user widget. I just wanted to show you that there are slight variations. We're gonna delete this and we're gonna make a activatable. And we're gonna make a common activatable widget. Widget blueprint, common activatable widget. And we'll open that up. And from here, if we notice, we'll go between the two, we'll notice that we have the is back handler. And then we have, let me expand this so you can see, is back action displayed in action bar. <laughs> now, a back handler is the back button we set up in the settings. So when we created the inputs for here, or wait, sorry, for here. Our back action is the back handler. So they are the same thing in what we created. So that would be um, for my keyboard, the backspace, or it's my circle button on my PlayStation 4 controller. So that allows you to go to, um, you can, either go back to like the previous widget. Uh, you could close out the main menu. You could do whatever you want with that back button, uh, depending on what you designate. Now it does require you to specify what it's going to do. Uh, and we'll also show an example of that, but I'm just gonna go over kind of these tabs at the moment. Uh, we're gonna ignore the displayed in action bar right now. Um, We'll go into action bar in a, in a bit, but that's not what I want to focus on right now. And then auto activate means that the moment you have created this widget means the widget is activated. And what that means is that your controller input could actually move onto it. Uh, if you have auto activate off, that means when you create the widget, it's not going to automatically allow your controller to switch its focus onto that widget. So there is um, the ability to auto focus to it so that whenever you create like a prompt, let's say you make a second widget, you'd be able to have the focus go onto the next widget you created automatically. And then supports activation focus. This just allows you to be able to use your inputs onto this widget. It's default on, on its own. And then auto restore focus, if we hover on top, it automatically will restore focus to that widget that was focus last. So let's say you have um, a prompt where prompt one will open prompt two. And the moment you delete prompt two, it goes back to prompt one. So that's what auto fo restore focus would do. And then this is if you wanted to override to put in a um, input action here, but we're not gonna go ahead and do that. But yeah, so that kind of goes over the activatable widgets and the little details. Now, of course, there's a lot more functionality that we're gonna go into, but as of right now, um, just wanted to explain what those tabs were. So let's go ahead and we're going to go back into our widgets. We're gonna rename this common user widget to main menu. From here, what most main menus are going to provide is a canvas. And this is gonna be the only canvas panel we're going to use. So with canvas panels, you do wanna 
reduce the amount that you use. Uh, you don't want to throw every widget you have with canvas panel, you're going to end up having a very high performance UI, slow down, and not many people are going to be able to handle that. Um, unless you have great computers, but nonetheless, we're going to use a canvas panel. From here, you'll also notice that we have different types of plugins. They're very similar towards the standard plugins. So you have common, but then you have common UI and then you have common UI plugins. And then I think, yeah. And then we have uncategorized where you have uh, activatable widget stack out of activatable queue and then video player. And then let me see, I don't think those are, yeah. Then you have the common bound action bar. Uh, yeah, I think those are the only common UIs. Anyways. One of the greatest things about Common UI is that if you have buttons, text, borders, you can actually set all of them to use the same style. And then you can change those styles without changing all the buttons. You go one by one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first create a button and our main menu is gonna consist of um, however many buttons we want, we'll choose in a second. And then from here, what I'm going to do is go into blueprint class. We're gonna type in common button and we're gonna select common button base. So make sure to do button base and not common bound action button. These are very, very different. Action button is only used really to display the images of um, your um, inputs. So like it, think of if you have tabs and f you want to filter through the tabs using the one and two key. This is what you'd use so that you can populate that one key and that two key. Just don't get mixed up between the two. So we're going to do button base. From here, widget blueprint underscore, and we're gonna call this uh, button base. This is gonna be all of, our, all of our buttons. And then from here, we'll notice under style, it's blank. So we're gonna need to create a style for our button. So we can design our button. So like if we want a button that's gonna contain images, um, animations, whatever we want to do. Uh, we'll have all of that that we can make, but we can also set it so that we can do uh, a style so that we don't have to individually add in all of our buttons. So if we were to grab in our button base, throw that up here, we don't have to go through all of these. Um... Hold on, let's grab a regular button. I, I can showcase to you. So you'll notice how here you have appearance and you have style and you have normal hovered, pressed, disabled, normal foreground, all of that other stuff. And then if we go to button base, we'll notice we don't have appearance there. And that's because we'll be able to set the style based upon whatever we create in here. And then we'll be able to select that style. And then every button that has this style will change based upon whatever we change. So we'll hit that plus button. We'll go into make sure common UI under widgets, and we're just going to name this button or let's do style button base save. And then it should open it automatically. And then from here, we'll have those style options available. So we have normal, we have the select base hovered press. So for here, let's go ahead and create us some button styles. And you can also actually put sounds. So if you have a press sound, a uh, select press sound, lock press sound, you'll be able to go through this and click on button just like that. You can have a sound so that when you hover, um, I don't know, you can do really anything like that. Let's go ahead and design our normal hovered, our normal pressed 
as such. So from here, let's change this to, see, I'm always using green. Let's go ahead and use kind of a T. Uh, let's, yeah, let's go for like kind of a teal color. Maybe a darker blue for when it's hovered and then press. Let's go even darker like that. So that's our normal hovered and pressed and then a disabled. Let's go ahead and change this to like a dark gray. So we'll go to our button base. We have the style on, but you'll notice we have absolutely nothing here. So in order for your button to actually contain that style, you need to add a overlay. So go to overlay and throw that on. And just like that, you'll notice how we have that teal color that we made. So if we went back over here, change this to like red, and go back, you'll notice it's changed. I'm going to control Z to undo that. But just like that, we'd be able to change all of our buttons. And I can also showcase this by having our button base. Um, let's reset to default. From here, let's do this. Let's go ahead and copy, copy. Oh, where's the other ones? Oh, I think I zoomed out. And we do that. If we go over to our button base, change this color once again, compile, and we'll change the color. I'll do control Z and like that. So we'll be able to adjust all of our buttons that have this style. It makes it super easy. It's super useful and really recommend it. So Try to use styles as much as you can. You can create multiple, but it makes your life so much easier. So we're going to go ahead and delete all of this. From our button, I also want to set up a text. Oh, let's do common text. And from here, we're going to put that in the oh, let's center. And just like buttons, a text can do the same thing. So also just keep in mind that you have to make sure you select on the common text and not just regular text. So that's the difference between the two. You could do the same thing with borders. Hmm. If I actually go into blueprint, type in style, we can do borders, we can do buttons, text scrolls, and text styles. Uh, so you'd be able to set up a style for all of those. Um, and like I said before, you can do as many as you want. Uh, it makes your life so much easier with UIs. So we want a text style. So we're going to go to text style. And we'll just do style text space. And let's open this up. Once more, I like to just get rid of the event graph. Also remember when you create a style, uh, you have to select a font, otherwise um, you're, you're not gonna have a text because you don't have font. Uh, so I'm just gonna do the standard. Uh, let's just change this to like, let's do like mm, 40. You're also allowed, you're, uh, you also can set like an outline. So if we wanted the outline, let's just do like five pixels. Outline color is going to be black. And then for text color, I think I'm going to change this to white. And then from here, if we change the style to text base, we'll notice that now it's white and it has the black outlines. And then if we went to none, compile. It disappears and it goes back to the standard.
Okay. From here. When setting a button, typically they have a text on the button so that you could read it. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that when we create a button inside of our main menu, as such, we need to be able to change the text. And as of right now, we're not able to, it just says text block. So in our button base, what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> we're gonna go to the event, or actually before we go to the event graph, we need to make this a variable. I'm gonna change this just to um, student text button, whatever we want, it's fine. Go to the event graph. From text button, what we want to do is set text. If you've made any UI, you're probably very familiar with setting text as such. And then promote this to variable. And we'll just do text. We want to make that instance editable and expose on spawn. And now, from here, if we go back to our button base, we can type in whatever we want. Just like that. So with that, we have a button. And we could make a play button. We can decide what we want to do. So let's see. We did text, we did buttons. Let's go through. Okay. Now let me show you the, let's see. I'll show you what a stack is because that's also a very, very useful common UI tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this button. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a stack. And we're going to grab what's a common activatable widget stack. So what this stack is, if we just pull it in and do this, we're going to stretch it to be the entire canvas. What it will do is it'll be able to add any type of activatable widgets that we make. So like I said before, where we create our activatable widget. So whatever we wanted to add in here, let's just say we threw in an image. What we could do is under root content widget class, we'll be able to select our widget that we made. And if we hit compile, oh, it's supposed to appear. Oh, is it because we didn't hit compile here? There we go. Okay. And like that, it will push any type of activatable widget that we want. Now, the root widget class is just whatever the default one is. You don't have to set one here, but this is to like specify this one will be the default uh, root. So whatever widget you want shown here. Stacks are commonly used for menus because let's say you have a main menu, you have a settings tab, you have, um, I don't know, patch notes, you could have, um, what, what else is there? I don't, I don't know. You could have tabs within um, widgets, wh whatever you need, whatever you are creating and need to push out, uh, whether it's like five different types of setting pages that you have, you could switch through all of them and you can push them all along through a stack. They're super useful. I use them in my tutorials and um, most people that use Common UI use this tool. So with that, let me go ahead and just clear this. Huh. And we're going to rename this to menu stack. That's where we're going to push our menus. And from here, what we want to do is we want to now create our main menu. So we're going to create the main menu where it's going to then open up the other tabs that are available. So we're going to go back into our common activatable widget. 
and let's go ahead and rename the main menu widget into uh, menu stack. And then we're going to rename our common activatable widget to main menu. Just doing a bit of renaming. I'm also going to create a new folder called style. And we're going to change these and throw those in here. All right. From here, we're going to, we're already in our main menu. Let's delete this image. We're going to grab an overlay and throw that in. So this is where we're going to be able to make our main menu. I am going to make all the buttons at the top and then we're just going to push some stuff at the bottom. So let's go ahead and grab a horizontal box. We're going to have this fill. And we're going to add our buttons. So let's go ahead and add three buttons. So in this overlay, let's highlight all of them holding shift and we're going to hit that fill button. So this will fill up the entire space of the horizontal box. And we'll notice that all three of them filled out from here. What we want to do is add some spacers. Spacers are used to add in uh, exactly as they want space between widgets so that you can move things around. Uh, so in overlays, um, you can't just grab stuff and drag them around. As you can see, it's just going to stay within. It's not like a canvas where you can specify where exactly it's going to be. So we're going to throw in some spacers. And we'll do this. Hey, come on. There we go. And there we go. I'm going to highlight all of them, holding control and selecting all of them. And then size uh, 10. Now let's do 50. OK. We're going to name this to play. We'll do settings. And we'll do quit. Quit. Settings. And play. And then we're going to wrap this with, let's go with. Where is my, oh, let's do common border and then do wrap with common border. And for common border, let's do a new style. So just like we did with all the other ones, go to style, we'll do style border base and for the background let's kind of maybe maybe like a dark purple I think that will look good um maybe, maybe I mean it could but let's go ahead and add some padding here like 10 that's fine Okay, so it's looking good. Now let's just see if all of our buttons are doing as we want. So let's go ahead and go into here. Oh, there's a few things we need to do first. So menu stack. Owner's going to be self. Compile. 
Now we shouldn't need to open this up anymore because that's all we need to do. But what we need to do is that for our menu stack, let's just change the default to our main menu. And then one thing we need to do for the main menu is we need to be able to tell the game what to focus on first. So buttons can have focus, which will allow us to move our controller on, but we need to tell the game what to first designate it to. So if we go to override, we want to get desired focus target. And then we want to take our first button. So whatever you want to designate as the first button to hover on top of. So for me, it's going to be the play button. But whatever it is. And then we also want to do an event. So let, let me delete this. Event on activated. We want to get desired focus target and set focus. Oop. Set focus. This means once this activatable widget becomes active, the first target that we decided will be set on the input. And then now, we need to be able to go into the game. Our widget is available. Oh. Oh, let me plug in my controller. Hold on. And like that, we're able to move through. So if we go into play, We'll also notice that I'm not starting on the play button automatically. So I'm going to hit the right button and I go to settings. So that's something I wanted to show you and to clarify on how to fix. That is because it is not designating the controller to be the first input. So as one of the, I think one of the only tutorials of common UI that Epic has provided has actually gone over this and that's why I think it's pretty important to go over. You go to project settings and we're going to go to input settings and our default is mouse keyboard. If we actually change this to gamepad and then let's find out what we called it. Okay. It's just generic. Okay. So in the settings, change this default game name to generic. We want to match our controller data. And then from here, oh, there we go. Yep. So the moment we hit play, you'll notice that the play button is highlighted, whereas before that was not a thing. And that's how we get the controller to work. Now to save all of our ears, because trust me, I know how annoying that sounded. Uh, let's go into our styles, our button base, and let's just get rid of this. It's a little loud, really annoying. I think it's the hovered sound that's really annoying. Um, but nonetheless, get rid of that. Okay. So next, what we want to do is I'm going to show you how we can utilize the common activatable widget. So from here, what we want to do is that when we press play, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to select um, two different like levels that we could open up to. So like level one, level two. Uh, with that, we're going to have to make a widget that will pop up and then we'll have them select one or two. And then we're also going to do the quit button. When you select quit, you'll be able to either select yes, you want to quit or no, you don't want to quit. The difference between the two is that what we're going to set up for the play button is we won't disable the play settings and quit button. So we'll still be able to move through. But when we when we hit the quit button, we're going to disable those top buttons. So in order to do that, what we have to set up is we need to use a stack. So our menu stack widget 
how we have the menu stack, we need a second stack. So stack. And we'll just name this pop-ups. Uh, pop-up stack. And then make sure to center it. Zero, zero. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0, 0, and then size the content. So that way, whenever we populate stuff, it'll just populate based on uh, the size. All right, so let's go into two, 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 the event graph. From here, what we want to do is we're going to grab this, actually, Let's do this. We're going to go event stack. And then we're going to push widget. And we're going to select the main menu. And the reason I'm doing that is what we're going to do is in the main menu, we are going to pass along the menu stack widget. So we're going to create a variable. We'll just call this uh, menu stack or um, we'll call this menu base menu stack object reference and instance editable anyways menu base and we'll do self. And the reason for that is that when we end up pushing our other widgets, we'll be able to push this pop-up stack. So we're going to get here. We're going to do push, or let's do custom event, push pop-up, push widget. And we're just going to connect those two. So what we can do is that now in our main menu, if we were to drag this off, we can go into push pop-up and we can select whatever widget we create. So it, to kind of explain, to add anything onto a stack, you're going to use this push widget. Now, I know we don't really need to do a push widget for the menu stack since we set it as our root, but in order to also get a reference for it, um, I did the push, so we add that to the stack, even though it already exists. We can also remove this and it won't actually make any difference because if we go into press play, we'll have it push immediately. So next we want to do is we want to create our activatable widgets. So we want to make those pop-ups appear in the center of the page. So let's go ahead and create a little menu with two options. So we're going to create a brand new activatable widget uh widget blueprint and we'll just do button menu or, yeah button menu and then from here what we're going to want to add is let's do a overlay throw that up here and we want a common text so we want to be able to set what type of text we're going to use uh, common text. We're going to want it into the top center, uh, but we're also going to want to add two buttons. So we're going to give like a yes or no, one or two type options. So in order to do that, we're going to be using our boxes, which we use tons. So we're going to need a vertical box. Let's actually wrap this with a vertical vertical box. On the vertical box, we're going to set it to fill completely. So it's going to fill this overlay. Um, actually, let's let's replace this. Let's use a common border instead of an overlay. Oh, whoa. Why can't I do that? Or maybe wrap with common border. There we go. That makes more sense. And with the common border, we're going to use our style. 
and that way we get that purple that we set earlier. So back to our vertical box, we're gonna hit zero, so there's just no padding there. And then for here, we're gonna make it set to the center. And then we can have it fill, center. We're gonna add another horizontal box. We're gonna set this to fill as well. We're gonna grab buttons. So we're going to throw in two buttons here. Ooh, come on, go in the box. There we go. And then control D to copy and paste. So this is going to be button option one. And this is going to be button option two. We're going to set these to fill. And then padding, just throw in like a 20. And then also what we can do is so that we always have the size that we want, we can set the minimum and uh, minimum width and minimum height of the button that we want to set. So let's do minimum width 200 and then height, we'll do like an 80. So let's go ahead and just take a look to make sure that it's working. So we're gonna go to main menu and then for play on base clicked, we're gonna go ahead and put the push pop up there. And then we can just specify button menu. So we're gonna go ahead and click on here. Hit play and the pop-up appears. Now, obviously we don't have any focus yet because we haven't set it within the button menu. So let's go back to our button menu. What we're gonna do is I showed you previously on the main menu where we can set focus by doing this option, get desired focus, and then set focus. Now, the other way you could do it is that under details, you can go look for is focusable, turn that on, and select the button you wish it to focus on. Uh, so we're gonna select on focus option button one. And then both of these should be focusable automatically. I think buttons are auto turned on, yep. And then we're gonna go into here. We're gonna hit play. And now we have these two options. And you'll notice that I can move up. So we have those options available. We haven't set anything on this yet, but that is intentional. So what we're gonna do next is we need to make all of these options, uh, all the options optional. Okay. So before we go ahead and do that, we're gonna turn on a few things. So we're gonna have is back handler. This is what allows us to press that back button. Uh, so if we actually press in here, and I'm gonna press circle, the back button, and it closes it. So I didn't have to do anything special. We already set up the inputs and I can close it just by pressing the back button. So any menu that you open up, your back button will automatically work. So, perfect. And then let's go ahead and make sure we have auto activate just so that the moment we push it, it turns it on automatically. Another thing we want to set is that based upon deactivating this widget or activating, you can actually specify what you wish it to do. So how you normally have visibility where you can set it to non hit, hit testable, visible collapse hidden, you can also set that when it is activated, you can set it to where it could be visible, collapse, hidden, um, etc. So under deactivated, what I'm gonna have this one, base is gonna be collapsed. Now it should default to that anyways, uh, but if, it, if you ever wanna specify different actions, you can do so. And then auto restore focus is something um, also useful, so it just automatically will restore focus um, to the last widget when you close out this widget. So if we did auto focus, we hit play, hit circle, and we go back to play. So we're just going back and forth. And you'll notice we still have focus, which is really helpful for controllers. All right, so now let's go make all of these options available. We're gonna do TXT title. 
And then from here, we need to be able to set the texts that are available. So let's go ahead and go into the graph. And we're going to set text. Actually, let's go into the button. I, I forgot what I called it or what. It, yeah. Isn't it just text button base? Text. It is just text. OK, that's I probably should have named that a little better. But we'll do set text. And then copy paste. Let's actually move button two over here. Moat. Text or let's go BT one text. There's probably better names for that, but it's it's fine. BT one and two. Let's just spell it text. We don't have. OK, so that gives us our options for our text so we can specify whatever names that are going to be there. And then let's see, we have our title. So we also need to get title. Set text. Title text. Okay, so if we go over here, yeah, we got the three options. We have button one, button two. Uh, let me actually change this order. Just put that on top. And then we should see title. Okay, cool. Uh, so something I want to show you real quick. I'm not actually going to use it, but I want to kind of demonstrate the capabilities. We have a common action widget. And what this does is this will actually show the specific icon that we specify. Now for our options where you have like a button that will only be specified between a specific button, uh, you'd be able to pull this in and use it. It's actually really easy to set up. Uh, so for example, um, this is not exactly what I'm going to use it for, but just to showcase, all you have to do is add it and under input actions, you'll then specify what input it will represent. So if we want it to represent, like, let's say the left and right tab, uh, we'll go into here. We'll select the data table and whatever um, input you represent. We're going to hit play, and then I'm going to open this up. Oh, I disconnected my controller on accident. Come on. There we go. And then we'll see that we have the left and the right tab icon. Now, they're kind of small uh right now but we do show that they are available so let me actually enlarge that a little bit for you guys uh that's because we don't have any text that's specified here so let's just do like option one option two uh title and then oh did we ever specify the oh let's set our styles okay so let's go back in here hit play and there we go. So we have the left and the right button that are available. Uh, and if I move the mouse, we notice that we have the left and the right. Uh, so that is how you would utilize that. Now, of course, left and right, it's not the grace button for mouses because you actually use that to navigate throughout the UI uh, as you move around. But anyways, that is how you can utilize. It's actually super easy that you can add it into anything. Uh, sorry that it keeps disconnecting. That is my old PlayStation 4 controller for you. But let me get rid of these because I don't want to showcase those within this. Uh, but that is how we can set this up. Uh, so we have those set up. And now let's go ahead and I think we can now create a child blueprint on it. So if we go into blueprint or I may have to go to widget blueprint, but let's search button menu. And then we'll create widget blueprint. We're going to go level select. And by opening this up, should be able to change this select level. 
And then level one, level two. Okay, and we go into here. And what we'll actually need to set up is, I think we have to override, can we get our buttons? I don't think so. Button one, button two. Or can we do, I think we'll have to do bind on base clicked and do the same thing over here. Bind on base clicked. Uh, base clicked is the same thing for um, regular buttons where you just press click. I never actually went over those. Uh, let me open up a button uh, to just briefly explain. Uh, so if we were to go on to the button base itself and go all the way down, or not down, where are all of the events? We're in the right one, right? Common base button. Add event, common button. Okay, uh, so it has a lot more buttons in comparison to what um, the standard button has. You have like on action, so whenever you uh, fired off the specific input action that you set for the button, you have on clicked, which is normal. You have disabled, double clicked, enabled, um, on pressed, on released, on select. You have all of those functionalities. And then if we went into button menu and you went over it, if you scrolled all the way down, uh, you have on select change base, you have on base clicked. Uh, that is the normal click. You have a double click function, hovered, unhovered, and then just based upon whenever the visibility has changed and then on select base changed. Now there is a lot more options to that. So if you did like bind, you'll be able to see all of those. Uh, but when you're on the button base itself, it has a lot more events that you can add in there, uh, as you can see here. So just to showcase that functionality. Anyways, go into create event. And we're gonna do a matching event. And we're gonna do, 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 this is level select, so we'll just do level one. Create, level, oop. Create a matching event, level two. And all we're gonna do is do open level by object reference. And this is also technically like a little level select, but anyways, we're going to call this third map two. And we'll do third map two and we're going to do third person. So like that, we're able to open level one, level two. Let's open level two just to showcase that it's actually a different level. Go over here and I'm just gonna delete this. Okay, perfect. And back to main menu. So I'm going to my controller. We're gonna press play and then, oh, looks like we don't have any text. That's my fault. Uh, but if we hit level one, oh, we'll notice nothing is happening. So let's exit out of that and see what's happening. So bind on base clicked. Shouldn't be overriding anything because we have button one. On base clicked. Hmm. Oh, that's my fault, sorry. What happened is right now we're still doing the original button menu and not the level select. That's, all right. Now press play, now we have select level and we press one and we went in there. Let's try this again, press play. 
And then we're level two. You notice how the thing is missing in the end. So like that, we're able to make a little menu. Uh, just make sure you specify what widget you're opening. Uh, for option one, option two, we never set, or I think we did option one, option two. I wonder why it didn't pass along. Maybe we're not doing the right thing. Text. Set text default. Is that not what we're doing here? Set text. Oh, set. Set text. No, I'm pretty sure that's what we set. Let's go back in here. Press play. Okay, it looks like did something slight wrong. So let's go back into button menu to open our button base. We go in here, we have our text block. It's set based upon this text variable. So let's go ahead and try something else. Let's grab the text button and set text. Or set text. Okay. And do here text button and set text. Press play. A well, level one appeared, but level two didn't. And that's just because, once again, we're not plugging things in correctly. Press play. All right, so we have level one and we have level two popping up. But as you can tell, the text is a little too big, but that's okay. I don't need anything crazy right now. We could technically fix that by just going into the button base and making it a little taller. Uh, so, or in our level select, wherever we set our base size button menu, here, yeah, where we had a minimum height, we could do like 100, let's do like 250, 100, 250. Hit play, and there we go. So like that, we have our level select, hit back the bu button, and we could go through. Now let's go ahead and push our quit button by doing the same thing, and we're just gonna deactivate these buttons up here. So let's go ahead and go into common UI widgets. We're going to take the level select button and just do control D. And we're just going to do quit confirm. Open this up. We shouldn't need to change anything because it worked before. Um, are you sure after we hit the quit button? So yes and no. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. So what we need to do is that under the main menu, when we hit the quit button on base clicked, we're gonna do the exact same thing where we're gonna push the menu and we're gonna do the quit confirm. And what we're also gonna do is deactivate widget. So we're going to deactivate ourself. And what we're deactivating is this main menu so we don't touch those buttons. And let's also make sure that uh, our on deactivate, we just set to not hit testable. Uh, I think self and children are perfect. And then once activated, it should be visible. So let's go ahead and click on this. We're going to hit the quit button. And then, oh, we actually, it disappeared. And I don't think we want that. So if we hit the back button, it actually closed it out. And that's not what we want. 
So let's actually fix that. All right, so as this video gets even longer, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to fix that issue where it's disappearing, but I will do a solution where we can do the back button, reopen it. Uh, I'll go over in a different video when I start um, doing other videos on specific um, widgets themselves. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're gonna do a bit of a workaround based upon what I currently set up. It's not the best route to go about it, but I'm gonna show you on what you can do uh, to make a widget disappear and reappear. Uh, so the thing is, the way that we set up our base is that we set it up through here. Um, and how we did pop up, we should have done something similar to pushing the menu stack. And then the menu should have a, a reference as well. But since we are not doing that, it's gonna be a bit of a workaround. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our quit confirm. And what we're going to do is a bit of a workaround. We're gonna get all widgets of class. Uh, we're gonna turn off top level and we're gonna get our menu stack. We're gonna loop this through. And then we're just going to promote. And we're going to call this menu stack. And what we're going to use that for is that instead of level one, level two, we're going to change these. We're going to name this to um, we'll name them yes and no. So yes, we're going to quit the game. So nothing we have to do here. And then no, we are going to grab the menu stack. We're going to get the... Oh, wait, we have menu stack, which is menu stack. We want... What's it called in here? Is Did I really call menu stack within menu stack? That's... Brilliant. Yeah, it's called menu stack. Okay. Push widget. And from here, we're going to then push the main menu again. And then we're going to deactivate widget. So what that'll do is that when we go in here, we're going to hit the quit button and we hit no and we bring it back. So we can do the same thing with controller and no. The only thing is, if we go into the here and we press the input back button, it just disappears. Now, how we can fix that is under the quit confirm, we're gonna copy all of this and the function override, we're gonna go into on handled back action. So this is the back action button that we press and you can actually specify what you'd like to do with it. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we can have the back handle, make sure to set that to true. And what we're gonna do is the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go through here, we're gonna go to quit, and I'm gonna hit the back button and we reopen it. Now again, this is a bit of a workaround. It would have been a lot better if in this stack, I push the widget like this, and I would be able to kind of set the reference, um, or if I was able to set a reference like I did with the other pop-up. But that is a bit of a workaround that we can do. All right, so that is actually going to conclude this video. I hope that you learned a lot about Common UI, all the functionalities with it. I'm gonna do separate videos on specific widgets such as tab lists, uh, carousel, and things like that. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, all the self-promo stuff. Hope you learned a lot here. Join the Discord, all the other mumbo-jumbo. All right, it's great having you.